Now, this is a very scary looking trigonometric equation, but what I want to do in this video is show you the easiest way to approach a problem like this so you can tackle any sort of complex trigonometric equation that you come across. Now, right away, anytime you're working with trig expressions that involve cotangent or cosecant, your instinct is going to be to change them into either sine, cos, or tan. And in this case, we're going to get there, but we're actually going to take one step first that's really going to help simplify your life. And that step is we're going to take this two cotangent of x and we're going to bring it over to the left hand side of the equation. And the reason we do that is because trig equations are always easier to solve when they are equal to zero. So we're going to do that by bringing the two cotangent x over to the other side by subtracting. And you'll see that we're now left with an equation that's equal to zero. Now, if you put on your math hat and you take a look at this equation, you're going to notice that this term here and this term here both have a cotangent x in common. And when there's things common in math equations, we like to factor them out. So we're going to do that. We're going to common factor out a cotangent x, and that's going to leave us with just this cosecant squared x, right? I take this term and divide out the cotangent x. So I'm just left with this guy. And if I divide out a cotangent x here, I'm just left with a minus two. Okay, I'm going to close up my brackets and I'm still left equal to zero here. So at this point, we factored our equation. And this is great because we've got multiplication happening here. And we know that anytime there's two things multiplied and the whole thing's equal to zero, we can split this up and treat it as two separate cases. One where the first piece is equal to zero and one where the second piece is equal to zero. So I'm actually gonna be solving two trig equations from this point forward. Now let's start with cotangent of x. We know that cotangent of x, if you think about your identities, cotangent should be cos over sine. I'm hoping you know that if you're solving a complex trig equation like this. Cotangent of x is just the same as cos of x over sine of x. Now, if we want to solve for x here, we have no choice but to multiply our denominator out to be left with the cos of x equal to zero. Now, that is a very simple trig equation. You could probably solve that in your head. You could use a calculator or you could even just draw a graph of the cosine function. And we know the cosine function starts at one uh, and ends at one, but the values that are going to make cos of x equal to zero are going to be pi over two, that's this guy right here, and 3 pi over 2, which is this guy right here. So we've got two solutions to this trigonometric equation just from this little branch over here, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now what we want to do next is go over to this branch where we have cosecant squared x minus 2 equals 0. Now this one's going to be a little bit more complicated because we're working with a squared and we also have this minus 2 that we should take care of first. So we can do that just by bringing the negative 2 over to the other side by adding. That's going to leave us with the cosecant squared of x equal to 2. And I also don't like this power of two here. So we're gonna get rid of that by taking the square root of both sides. That's just gonna leave me with the cos can of x and that's gonna be equal to the square root of two. Now, before we move forward, we should think about what cosecant of x is. That's a reciprocal trig expression. And I don't really like that. So I'm gonna change it to a primary trig expression. And in this case, we know that cosecant x is just one over sine of x. Okay, so I'm gonna change it into one over sine of x. I've still got that root two on the right-hand side. What we're gonna do is just multiply the sine x over to the other side, divide by root two, and we're gonna be left with something like this. One over root two is equal to the sine of x. Now, this is another pretty simple trig equation that we can solve. I'm not gonna go into immense detail here, but let's imagine we take the sine inverse of both sides. What we would see is we would get x is equal to pi over four. That's one of the solutions that will make this possible. But remember with trig equations, there can be two solutions. And this solution will only be the solution that is in the first quadrant of the unit circle. To find that second solution, you might remember that you have to subtract from pi, right? This whole thing is pi. We want to take out that pi over 4. And when we do that, we're going to get 3 pi over 4 as another solution to this equation. Again, a little bit of basic trigonometry involved here to really work out this full solution. So I'm hoping you have a pretty good understanding of that if you're watching this video. Now we've actually made a little bit of an oversight in our solution at this point, because remember, anytime you take the square root of a number, you actually have a positive and a negative answer, right? So we actually have a positive and a negative one over root two that we have to consider. We just did the positive side. We should also look at solving this equation for when the left-hand side is equal to negative one over root two. And so if we apply that same sign inverse process, we're going to get a solution of five pi over four. And again, we need two solutions. And we can apply a unit circle approach to find the second solution, which in this case is going to be seven pi over four. All right, so you can see why this is a pretty complicated example of solving a trigonometric equation. There's that first trick of noting that you should bring this term over to the left side 
and then common factoring. That's always a sticky point for people. People forget that you can common factor when you're working with trig expressions. Remember then we end up with two branches of equations. The one on the left was pretty simple, but over here we got a little bit of scary stuff with the root. But if you think back to what you know about trigonometry and trigonometric equations, for all this turns out to be not that complex of an example to come up with six solutions to this complex looking trigonometric equation. All right, I'm hoping this video helps. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.